what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am answering your guys' questions that you left for me on a previous video. Now, if you have a question for me that is not in this video, please leave it in the comment section down below and it will be answered in next video. So, without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to try to avoid some of the repeat questions. So if you do want to ask a question, make sure it's unique. So first one is from Cold Stone Cancer Gang 99 and they said, what do you think of the base model CX-30? Well, I love my Mazda 3, which is sitting out in the driveway right now, which is essentially the same thing as a CX-30, just minus some suspension changes and some body changes. I love my base model Mazda 3. It's the best thing I've ever purchased. Although I haven't specifically driven a base model CX-30, I can't imagine it's too far off from my car, which I love. Rusty Pizza asks, should I keep my FC Vert all stock or try to sell it and get an NANB? By the way, love your videos. Thank you. Uh, I would keep your FC Vert, honestly, with the way rotary prices are going up, 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 up. I would highly recommend holding on to that. And just especially with the NANB Miata market right now is crazy and it's not going to get any cheaper. So I would probably stick with the FC Vert, but that's just my own cup of tea. Vinny Lambo asks, what's your favorite car to review, least favorite, and why? My favorite car I've been thinking about a lot recently has probably been the Nissan 200ZS that I drove from Xenon Z car out in Pennsylvania. Um, I think it was a whole mix of things. It was a really cool day. I got to meet Joe from Xenon Z car who's super down to earth, super knowledgeable about Z cars, really, really awesome. As well as I had the car alone on a foggy road in Pennsylvania on some twisty turny roads in an abandoned town, which was amazing. Just one of the most amazing days. So that car for sure. Um, least favorite has been probably recently the Fiat 500X was really, really bad, but also it's still just from years and years and years ago, the, the Shelby GT500 from 2007 um, was pretty terrible. Uh, the Q45 guy says, what car surprised you the most in a good or bad way? I would say definitely, again, the 200ZS was pretty high up there. I just thought it was just going to be another VG sort of 80s Nissan, but it really wasn't. It was really something special. I think the biggest one for me is the Evo. I drove an Evo 7, I believe. Maybe it's an Evo 8. And uh, I really, I started driving it. And I'm like, this thing's a dog. This thing is slow. And then I got into Boost. Um, and then my mind was changed. Carrie asked, do you think it's worth getting a hybrid car for long term keeping, keep having in mind that the hybrid battery will just last up to 10 years or get a regular good MPG compact car like Elantra or Civic? I would honestly opt for a gasoline car. However, it depends on your driving. If you're just around town, like my parents don't really leave town all that much, a hybrid car is fantastic for you. But if you do drive it a lot, you're going to put a lot of miles on the car, I'd recommend a traditional gasoline car. The Fox asks, I am a 14 year old boy and I really want to get into rotaries. What should I do? Don't. I'm just kidding. Um, I love rotaries, obviously. My camera is mounted on top of my 85 RX-7 right now. Just. The one thing I always tell people when they say, hey, I want to get into rotaries, um, because they can do all the Googling. You can Google anything you want. You can watch videos, uh, maybe not even my videos, although I got some good videos. Uh, just search YouTube. You could find all that information. The biggest thing I always tell people is understand what you're getting yourself into. These are rare cars. Their engines are no longer produced or even made. And not only that, you have to realize that you're getting into a 20 year old car, a 30 year old car. Like my RX-7 is 36 years old. And so while yes, it's unique and different, it also has that taxing years put onto it. So it's a 36 year old car. Rubber is dry rotted, plastic is failing and cracking. So it is sort of expensive, but just fully be aware of what you're getting yourself into before getting into it. I dove headfirst into my red car, had no idea really how a rotary worked, and I learned in trial by fire. If that's what you need, then that's what you need. But just understand what you're getting yourself into. You're gonna have to pre-mix it. You're gonna have to treat it a lot different than other cars. Ryan asks, is the Lexus RX 300 reliable? Yes, it's a Lexus. This next question I really, really like. It is from Bratco and it says, how do I find my YouTube niche or niche? Basically something that sets you apart from the rest. 
I love this question, um, and I was lucky enough to, when I first started making first gen RX-7 videos, there wasn't much out there on the internet. There was a couple guys who had, you know, filmed them with their phones and stuff like that, but there wasn't really dedicated, produced videos about first gens. Now they're pretty common, um, but back in the day that was how I sort of found it, is I had this car and realized that not a lot of people actually made consistent videos about them. But I think honestly the biggest thing is that you have to find something that you truly enjoy. I truly enjoy reviewing cars. I truly enjoy working on my RX-7 and owning rotaries. It's not for YouTube. If I didn't have a YouTube channel, I would still have an RX-7. So I think the biggest thing is you just have to find something that you truly enjoy. And when you truly enjoy something, it comes through the camera. It really, really does. It's very obvious to tell when people just do something for views, for things like that. I really enjoy the things that I do, and I hope that it comes through the camera. And I know it does, because I watch my friends make videos, and you can tell they're not really into it, and it's like, ugh. But then, they make a video or a topic or something like that that they're really into, and you see their eyes light up in a different way. So I would say just find your passion and do that, because even if it is just car reviews, Add your own personality to it. Yes, there are tons of car reviewers out there, but I don't think there's a car reviewer out there that has an obscene laugh like me, or drives as mundane cars as me. So that's sort of what I try to do. Next up is from Paul Shin. He asks, if kids grow up so fast, why does it take them so long to leave the house? Paul, I'm trying to leave the house so bad, but the housing market in my area that I want to move to uh, is not the best. It's all money, money, money. Rick asks, what do you think of the Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4 and it has not gone up in value while its other Japanese competitors like the Mark IV Supra, FD RX-7, and NSX have? Do you think it'll ever go up? That's interesting. You know, the 3000 GT really hasn't gone up in price. I think it's kind of hurt by the fact that there's also the Dodge Stealth, which is the same car, mostly, um, and no one wants to buy a Dodge Stealth. Um, I think they're cool cars. I reviewed one, but I always forget that I reviewed one. It's a very easily forgettable car. I don't think much really stood out to me about it, besides the fact that it was all-wheel drive, and I just remember it being so flat and like a pancake. I don't think it'll ever go up in value. I really don't. I think we're starting to kind of hit the top of the Japanese bubble as it is. And I don't think the VR4 would go up, but hey, maybe I'll eat my own words one day. Automotive Culture Love asks, cliche question, but what is your favorite, manual or automatic? Know before you fanboys go to saying manual is the way to go. Please don't forget automatics are kicking manuals butts left and right nowadays, although all three of my cars are manual, so nobody's bias here. My favorite automatic transmission is definitely the PDK transmission from Porsche. Every PDK Porsche that I've ever driven has been phenomenal, um, whether that be a Macan, a Panamera, or of course a 911. I love the, the PDKs, and all of Volkswagen's transmissions are actually really good and really responsive. That goes for, of course, PDKs, but also Astronics from Audi, and why am I blanking on Volkswagen? DSG, the DSG from Volkswagen. Um, I, I really like their automatics. I think a lot of modern automatics are really good. Even the economy transmission in my Mazda 3 is actually pretty good. If you guys saw my track video, it actually was responsive on track, which I did not expect out of a $20,000 economy car. Theo Parker says, do you still cry sometimes? Yes. Uh, and also, what's your goal with the channel and the jankiest car you've ever reviewed? So, jankiest car I ever reviewed was the Turdy 30 way back. This was like my eighth review or something like that. It might have been low teens, which now I'm on like 560 something. That was the jankiest because the transmission was held in with a single piece of bent metal that was self-tappered into either side of the hole that the shifter went through. So that was by far the jankiest. Goals for the channel is just to grow and just to drive cooler cars, weirder cars, uh, bring you guys the cars that you want to see and just have more resources to do so. Obviously work on the RX-7 more, but that's really it. Just continue what I'm doing just on a larger and larger scale because I'm really happy with what I'm doing. And I hope you guys are too. Retro Steven asks, are you going to do anything with Top Gear on your podcast, like your top 10 favorite episodes? There's so many episodes to cover, so it'll be interesting seeing your top 10. 
I don't think we would do a top ten. And and the podcast that Retro Steven is talking about is the podcast, the Unnamed Movie Car Podcast I do with my dad on its own dedicated channel, the Unnamed Movie Car Podcast. I don't think we'd do our top ten because my dad hasn't really seen any of the Top Gear episodes. And to narrow down your top ten, you pretty much have to watch them all, obviously. Um, and so we don't really have time for that. However, I am looking into doing a Top Gear special. Um, or I think we're going to do the Patagonia special, which is like two hours, so it's movie length, um, and we'll talk about that. So we will do some Top Gear stuff, maybe some Grand Tour stuff, things like that, but not uh, not a Top 10 because that would take way too much time. Moving over to Instagram questions, Pulsar says, can you please review my car when it's done? Yes, shoot me an email, PredoReviews at gmail.com. Xenon Zcar asks, why no pistons? I just like rotaries. I think they're different. I think they're unique. And you just don't see them anymore. And when you buy a rotary, you sort of join this little fan club. I love Datsuns, I love Nissans, I love Hondas, and I love Toyotas. They're all great. All old, anything old is is great from most Japanese manufacturers. But I feel like Toyotas and Hondas are very mainstream. Nissans, I feel like, are decently mainstream. Um, I would say my closest ally is the Nissan guys because they have interesting cars like the Z31 and the old 280s very close to the FBs where Honda and Toyota don't really have something on that caliber. Royal Vaughn asks what was your first car? It was a 1998 Dodge Ram 1500 Sport so it was the 5.9 liter V8 long bed single cab rear wheel drive. Missed that truck all the time. Mikey Allen asks, what are the best car meets in Illinois? Are there any good RX-7 specific meets? Yes. Well, yes and no. I'm not really sure on the meet scene right now. I haven't gone to a car meet around here in probably two years now. There's like stance stuff and JDM season openers. Really the stuff that I stick to is the Nostalgic Car Show. The Nostalgic Group does a spring barbecue. I don't know if they did it this year. But they usually do a spring barbecue and then Mazda Midwest is in the fall. Usually end of August, early September. That is my favorite show I go to every single year. Um, if you want to see R100s, RX2s, RX3s, Repos, first gen, second gen, third gen. First gens are a dime a dozen there. Like my car doesn't stick out. Out, uh, which is cool to see um, because you know at any other car show this is normally sort of you know one of the oddballs but then at Mazda Midwest it's it's so mundane that two years ago we had a row of four 13b swapped FBs all parked next to each other so I, I, I think that's funny so the, the Mazda Midwest meet is great and I will be posting about it if I do end up going this year well if it happens this year well I hope you guys enjoyed this video again if you guys have your own questions that I haven't answered make them unique make them different uh, leave them in the comment section down below and I will answer them in a further video or later video I guess I don't know I have to go film a B2200 now so adios